to another episode of Rantavision. Um, this episode will be uh, chatting to a very good friend of mine, David Lowe, who's here next to me, and we'll also be uh, reviewing some music as well. This is the first segment of Rantaview where we'll actually be um, featuring some bands, so we're looking very, very forward to that. But uh, yeah, without further ado, this is my good friend David. David is... Hello, everybody. So how's it? Yeah, David is a... Um, very successful businessman, well traveled, seen seen a lot of the world, and has actually written a book. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna chat about a little bit about his book. And uh, for those of you that uh, don't know, we are based here in South Africa, and um, our uh, president has just released us from uh, the alcohol ban that we've had. So yeah, we're all enjoying a little bit of a, of a <laughs> yes. drink today. Yes. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Here's my drink. Yeah. There you go. That is there. Yes. Yeah. So we've Cheers. been uh, let out of detention. We're enjoying a little bit of a drink and going to have a bit of a chat. So, yeah, David, so tell us, um, let's start, uh, yeah, how did you how did you get into writing this book? Tell us a bit about the book, what it's called, get inside your head a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's kind of an, a process of evolution and over many years, uh, so many things in my life didn't make common sense to to me. Um, we seem to be living in a world full of of myth and uh, and fantasy and uh, a lack of of, of, of authentic, authenticity uh, in terms of our true reality. And actually, I think that in in one sentence, it's really a book. It's it's really a common sense book. It's a uh, it's about common sense. Uh, there's a lot of people lack these days. Yeah, I'm afraid we do. Yeah. And we, as we're so subject to so much that comes off so many different forms of media and over many different uh, sources. And so we are also raised <coughs> with traditional beliefs, and, uh, you know, um, which are inculcated in us from a very young age. And so by the time we get to be adults, we almost have to start again to be adults because yeah. we've got to relearn everything that we were taught by our by our um, our seniors, our parents, our our, uh, our culture. So um, the book is really a, a, a it's it has a subtitle: a search for, for authentic reality, and that is because we 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 don't really understand human reality in the greater terms of the universe and so on. For sure. And um, so that, uh, in fact, you'll see on the screen that the, it says that uh, understanding is everything. I'm, I was thinking of actually changing the title to knowledge is power, but understanding is everything. Because at the end of the day, we can have as much knowledge as we want, but if we don't know how to apply it or we don't apply it in our lives, then it is meaningless. So we have to have the understanding. It's rather like we understand uh, we have an understanding of, of, of the sun, for instance, rising in the in the east and setting in the west, which it doesn't do. Now, we all know that. But the fact is, we live our lives as if that were the reality. The reality, of course, is different. We know that the earth re uh, revolves around the sun, and that causes the sun rises, uh, uh, and the rotates, uh, excuse me, and revolves around the sun, but rotates, and, and that creates an uh, impression of the sun rising. But, so it's that's a simple example, but there are many examples of that that, that take place, um, and uh, yeah, it forms a part of what we, what we, an extension of what our, our our learned reality is has to be unlearned, in order to find ourselves, <clears throat> which of course, when you get to my age, you've already done quite a lot of that. So, <laughs> I've, yeah. I've uh, well, well experienced. Yeah, I, I, I mean, d it does take time. And there are a lot of people who, who mature much younger than I matured in that sense. Yeah. But I felt I wanted to express my my views and my feelings to the world. And, ba and, ba and basically, the book that is the, the content of the book is basically just based on your your experiences, right? It's not. It's nothing like. Yeah, it's it's not autobiographical at all. In yeah. fact, I hardly mention anything myself about my own opinions in the book. I give people the understanding that 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 science has has given us over the last hundred years insights into our reality 
we, we, we got to find out about the structure of an atom. And um, we, we realized that, that Einstein himself said that the atom is in everything of all everything and by everything. And so maybe maybe the, 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 the biblical um, literal translation of, of omnipresence of the God we're supposed to believe in, who, who, according to us, is made for human use only. Uh, it's not the case. It's 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 universal, so that um, uh, atoms make up everything. Mm -hmm. And so Einstein was the one who said that we are all part of one, and he was referring to uh, plants and trees and every other form of life. And every other form of life has the same daily um, routine we have. We we sleep to 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 regain our energy. Mm -hmm. We eat to to uh, sustain that energy. We have um, tasks during every day, be it looking after children or... Um, um, uh, so so I, think, I think now also people have kind of lost that concept of what actually reality is actually supposed to be. Um, you think yeah. about it, we, we, we sleep to get energy, but we also, we, we also eat to get mm. energy, but people don't really like eat anymore because they're actually hungry. They eat just because... Yeah. It, it looks yes, exactly. Good, and yeah. we kind of over-consume type yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, just um, speak to us a little bit. I had the cover up here. We'll put it back up. Uh, just yeah, speak to us a little bit through. Um, he has the cover for the book, uh, "Love Your Life," and obviously, in the top there, we see it, uh, uh, "Lockdown Legacy um, Edition." So yeah, just um, maybe just. You know, speak to speak to me about. Um, obviously, there was a book before this yes. uh, lockdown that, yes. edition, and yes. then how you how you how you came about this one, um, along with the new cover and everything like that. Well, we had that whole period last year uh, where we were all in isolation, as we still are. Uh, and you know, when you change pace and you got less on your agenda, your brain starts to think about other things because sure. you're not caught up in the routine of life as as, as we've known it to be. And so it gives us a different perspective. And uh, the actual lockdown, I think, actually is a, in a sense, a lot of affirmative proof of what I've written in the book is actually true. Because in nature, everything needs to be in a state of balance. And unfortunately, human activity has become so pervasive on Earth that we are putting the pl planet into a position out of balance. We all know about the, sh the, pr the shrinking uh, um, ice caps and, mm -hmm. uh, and the changes in climate and so on. There are people who deny it, but then there are people who would deny anything. Well, we saw, uh, we saw how, the, how the Earth kind of like rejuvenated itself correct. during like the world lockdown exactly. period. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, we actually have proof of that. Yeah. In a matter of weeks, we had birds around that we had to see for a while. Yeah. Uh, animals were roaming yeah. in, in places. I think so, there was like dolphins in like the canals in like yes, Venice and yes. places like that. Yeah, very so my understanding is that what is going to happen is this is part of nature's need to, to reclaim her realm. And so uh, it may get worse or there may be other forms that she uses to bring back a balance. Because remember when I mentioned about the atom, the atom mm. itself is in perfect balance. Every, when you've got one proton in the nucleus, You've got an electron balancing it in the in the outer orbit of the of the atom, and so it goes through all of them until you get to I think it's 92 or 94 atoms in the nucleus, which is uranium, and it's so fully packed that if you now put something in, you make it unstable, and that's how we come to nuclear power. Yes, it's essentially that's what happens. So everything in nature is in a, a natural state of balance mm -hmm. and harmony. And we, we're living out of harmony. We've been doing this for centuries. For sure. And the technology has taken us further and further away from nature. Yeah. And it's not a matter of hugging trees. It's just a matter of, 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 of having a much simpler way of living life because we don't have human ego uh, interfering in everything along the way. Because that's, yeah. that's what's been And happening. obviously we've lost track of that as a society. I mean, like, yes. because nowadays it's all about, you know, the graft and... You know, you, you kind of get lost up in that in that in that type of stuff. You, yeah. know, you don't you don't actually take the time to sit exactly. back and kind of get back with nature. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. did you kind of um, get 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 sort of more inspiration, or more sort of ideas during the t a time in isolation over lockdown time? Where you yes. decided yes. You, you added some chapters to that book. Is yes. That correct? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, well, uh, it, I just accentuated the fact that in fact nature is taking things back, and that if we're not going to learn 
from what's been happening over the past number of years with uh, climate change, then nature's going to make it a lot more obvious to us. And it's interesting because COVID has actually hit us where it hurts most. It's hit our, our social circles. It's hit our mm -hmm. ability to mix with other people. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's actually simplified our lives. Uh, we may not realize it yet because we're feeling a, a lot of fear about the, uh, people contracting COVID. But at the end of the day, from a universal perspective, I think that nature is trying to reduce the impact of human activity. It may be reducing the, the, the population. It may be the, the habits we have. We already know that we're using, we've got less traffic on the roads. We, we're mm. polluting less than we were. Yep. And so it's moving in that direction. And, and that kind of reconnected with me over the, over the lockdown period. So that's why I came out with a, with a cover that had a, a lockdown, uh, that was the, the lockdown, uh, lockdown edition. edition. It was exactly. a couple of extra chapters. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then, mm -hmm. so then we were chatting a bit earlier sort of offline and you're saying that you weren't too happy about the, 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 the title of the book. So you're thinking about changing it? Yeah, uh, because I think that the, the title it indicates to people it's a sort of self-help book for them to love their partners better or, you know, I just felt it may not be as on point. And I thought that knowledge is power, but understanding is everything is more on point because we have the knowledge today. There are people who turn around and say, well, you know, the Earth's still, they, they, I mean, there is still a flat, flat Earth society in the world. I can't imagine why, but there is no evidence that scientifically shows any anything in that uh, uh, direction. Yeah, sure. And that's not just with that. It is an anti-science uh, uh, um, trend a, against intellectual, uh, intellectual and scientific uh, theory and discovery that people are just uh, digging in their heels and saying, no, that doesn't exist. And that, uh, so that's what they're doing with, with climate change. And so, um, but the evidence is there. And I'm not a scientist, but I mean, there's a quite a lot of stuff in the book that I'm able to even myself discover that things uh, uh, that are happening in nature are happening because there needs to be a a, a, a balance, balance yeah. brought back into, into into the world and it may be eventually that i mean you know we, we we think of everything in human terms we've only been on the planet as a civilized society i'm not sure how civilized well, that is civilized are we <laughs> no we're not <laughs> but for about ten thousand years since we the agricultural revolution and before that, we were a lot less, um, we were a lot more primitive. Um, but this, but we've been taught the science. Uh, Galileo went to the to the Pope in the in the in the Vatican, and he said, you know, um, the the sun doesn't revolve around the Earth. It's the Earth that revolves around the sun. The sun is the center of everything. And for I don't know, quite a long time, the Catholic Church were in denial about that. In fact, I think it was just in the last decade or two. Well, I think the Catholic the, Church are probably in denial about a lot of stuff. Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah, they are. But uh, in the last couple of, uh, uh, somewhere in the last decade or two, um, the Catholic Church forgave uh, Galileo for his heresy 500 years after he's uh, gone. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Galileo and others like him, and there were many uh, at the time, but it wasn't acceptable then. It's become much more uh, uh, knowledge has become an, and scientific information become much more accessible to everybody because we've got a, a world with, with technology that supports that. We're sitting here in a podcast and we're sharing stuff with other people around the world exactly. and <clears throat> and they are realizing, oh my goodness, those people are just the same as we are here. They just got funny accents, you know, that kind of thing. Exactly. So, but And people yeah. just seem to be, even though we've got all of this technology, we've got the knowledge and all of that, but like people just seem to be becoming dumber in terms of like a common sense yes, thing. Yes, yes. I suppose with technology also becomes yeah. you know, brings a lot of laziness along with this. I think so. I always said that there's no such thing as stupid people, only lazy people. And I think that's true. I think um, it's also very true, yeah. So, okay, before we move on from the book, yeah. Um, where can we find it? So if you want to... Oh, yeah. Well, it's on Amazon. Okay. Um, at the moment, I'm, I've got it with the publisher. That I'm, I'm waiting to hear from them here in South Africa. Because the problem with Amazon is that for South Africans that order Amazon, from Amazon, the shipping is as much as uh, the book. Yeah, exchange rates. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a problem. But for overseas yeah, yeah, people, yeah. it's easy. I mean, it's on Amazon uh, uh, and it's available either on Kindle or, or in book form. Well, okay, I would cool. recommend to people that they buy the book because I think it's the kind of book that should be 
read and reread are referred to, which sure. Kindle is, you know, as you're reading things off a screen, and you've got to go by the memory you've got. And I don't know, I'm not that fond of, of that type of. Uh, yeah, well, some people yeah. do. I'm, I'm like that with, with music. I prefer to have like a hard copy yeah. CD in my hand than, yes, exactly. than, than you know, having it on yeah. an electronic yeah. sort of um, yeah. basis. But cool, yeah. So I mean, if you're uh, if you if you're the reading type, then yeah, I mean, you can. Uh, David has a Facebook page as well, so you can get get in touch with David if you're interested in the hard copy. Otherwise, go check his book out. Um, you might learn a thing or two. It's very interesting. Um, I've given it to actually because David's given me a couple of the books. I'm not really a reading type of person, so I admit that. But um, I've actually given it to quite a few of my friends, and they've actually thoroughly um, enjoyed it. So check it out. And then um, you're also a bit of an art lover, aren't you? Yes, yes, I am. I'm not an artist at all, and I can't draw anything more than a stick man. But I've always been naturally uh, 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 found, uh, attracted to art, specifically painting more so than, say, sculptures and things. Okay, cool. um, I was married to a, a woman who was an artist. And um, and so I learned quite a lot from her about how it all works. And whatever. But she used to say to me, you've got a very good eye for for uh, good work. I said, well, I don't know how that happens, but whatever. So, yes, so what's happened over the years and living up in a village, a colour store that I stay in, or stayed in for a time, there were about 30 artists in the neighbourhood. So oh, I got more okay. involved there and I used to go to their studios and talk to them. And, and artists are very interesting people because they're actually, they're, they're actually the freer spirits of our, of our, of our community. And, um, For sure. and uh, so what I did was, uh, as a result of that, I decided to, because there are a lot of artists who are not well known, and a lot of amateur artists who don't even expect to get known, they just paint for their friends and their family or whatever. And they do a lot of good work. I think it's a good work. I'm not speaking yeah. technically about it, but I mean, because ultimately, art is not a beauty and uh, art is not a whole lot. Uh, exactly. so, um, so I decided to form a, a, um, w a website called artistsonfire.online, which is accessible to anybody who wants to see um, art that is not that's lesser known, that doesn't appear in galleries, but it's very, um, it's very talented work. And uh, so that's where we're headed with it. I uh, hope to launch the site in March and artists will be able to just ha send in their uh, high quality pictures on, on, on the cell phone and we'll put them on, on, on uh, the site. And there's no charge for them. It's a completely free service. And, um, and then ultimately, hopefully we have people, perhaps mostly overseas, buying the art and, uh, and, and then, you know, having it couriered over to Yeah, them. sure. So supporting the And local, it all goes local. in these little cardboard cylinders, so yeah. it's very easy to so work. So supporting the local artists, which is great. Yes, yes. So, exactly. I mean, yeah, that's what we're all about here um, at Rantaview. Um, you know, we all about supporting the underground. So whether it be a small business, um, a book, or artwork, you know, we're all about getting it out there. So I think that's a great initiative. So yeah, that's uh, in the pipeline. So um, look out for that. Um, Artists on fire dot online. And uh, yeah, I think that's a great platform for sort of underground unknown artists to kind of get their work out there. And uh, hopefully with Dave's um, expertise, get it over to a more sort of international market, which would be fantastic. All right, cool. So let's talk music. Yes, that's, sir. That's, that's what I love. I love music. Yes, and, and you know me, me too. and I, I listen to uh, obviously a lot of uh, you know heavy metal and things like that. Mm, mm. So what's uh, I know you like the old school like uh, Led Zeppelin yeah. and things like that. I mean, I'm who, a Led Zeppelin man. Who, who can't yeah. like Led Zeppelin? You know. Yeah. But um, tell us what 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 other music do you, uh, did you like? What what other music has kind of like you know or grabs you? What's influenced you along the way? Well, I, I was very lucky. I mean, I was. Uh, I was around in the in the conscious sense of music in the mid, mid to late 1950s, so I cut my teeth on Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Elvis Presley awesome. and Buddy Holly and oh that whole scene. And then of course the, the Beatles came along, and the Rolling Stones came along. They don't make them like they used to. Yeah, right? they don't. Yeah. And then there was the Who, and then yeah. of course Led Zeppelin. I'm sure I've left some out, but just in the scene. 
But um, yeah, and then, well, the funny thing is that I, I, I've talked to other people like this too. That there's a certain age at which you become, unless you're a musician, you become a little less conscious of what's actually vibing for you, if that's the right way to put it. You know, maybe, mm-hmm. uh, maybe you've got to be about 50 by the time that happens. Because my knowledge of the, of the 80s and 90s music is, is, is poor, except that I have a son who, who is Guns N' Roses and Metallica, which I enjoy. Um, but it, it somehow, I don't know, you get stuck in the old stuff as well. Sure. So, so I think I was very lucky in a sense where, um, you know, grow, growing up, I had, a, I had an uncle that was like full on into, into heavy metal and stuff like that. And um, my mom being a music lover as well. So I think like getting into music at a young age was a good thing. Obviously, I got into metal, but like I still, you know, I still... Um, appreciate like a lot of the, the the earlier stuff i mean i started listening to like bands like smoky you know which is not even that's just like good old rock and roll you know yes and um yeah going into obviously like i you know i got into like heavier stuff but i still love the good old stuff like zeppelin and rolling yeah. stones you know aerosmith and like you know yes van halen and bands like that it's just, it's yeah. just classics and you, you can't you can't yeah. put a timeline on it but yeah i love blues music too blues blues, blues i love and and like Eric Clapton, a lot of these guys, oh, yeah. Yeah. the foundation of the of the music that I grew up with was is the foundation, and then it grew exactly. from there. And really. unfortunately, we kind of lost that foundation a little bit. I think like you don't get like you know you, you've got your Elton Johns, your Eric Clapton's. I mean, I even mm-hmm. go as far as saying like George Michael, um, you know, things like that. Um, and obviously, all of your uh, sort of bigger bands that laid the foundation down for us as well. But I mean, in today's day and age. You know, we had the Queens and yeah. you know, the Zeppelins and uh, we mentioned them Yes, you, you're actually mentioning the bands. I think the bands actually set the trend. I don't think that the commercial pop music did so much. Of course, Michael Jackson did. Mm. And then people like Aretha Franklin. But she was actually more, she was more, um, more blues and rhythm than she was. Well, even myself, I'm, 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 I'm quite a Michael Jackson fan. I quite, I quite enjoy it. And I think it's because I, I only later on became a Michael Jackson fan. And I think it's because like looking back and going like, Oh, like you know that that's pretty cool, and like for for his day, and like you don't really get that anymore. You know nowadays it's like just uh, quite a lot of shit, like you know going yeah. on. It's gonna become too commercial. Too commercial, and yeah. You know, but just... the bands aren't the bands. I think the bands. I mean, I don't know a lot about uh, modern music, but going back even into the eighties and nineties, the bands led the way with the wave of change that came in music. Not really the individual artists. The individual artists followed that. I think. Sure. So I mean, I still, I mean, I still very much live in the '80s in terms of metal as well. I mean, I absolutely love '80s metal and um, listen to a, a lot, a lot more sort of older bands than I do sort of newer bands. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, the music is just timeless. I think uh, regardless of putting a age on it, it always sounds amazing to me. It's like it's like fine wine. You know? it gets better with age. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, cool. So I mean, that brings us to our feature band today. Um, that we will be speaking about, who is uh, called Sincere, and um, yeah, what's really cool is is that I, mean, what, I hang out with Dave all the time. He listens to my music all the time because he has no choice. There's there, there's always heavy metal blaring in this house. But what's nice is, you know, he doesn't. He, he's not a metalhead, so um, we're gonna we're gonna play play some Sincere. See what Dave thinks of it. You know, get get his uh, get his input. And uh, yeah, the best thing about it is that um, all the bands that submit to us, uh, we don't listen to them beforehand. So first time we'll be listening to it is, is on, on the actual show. Um, these are our boys over here. Sincere. That's what they look like over there. Just get that a bit bigger for you. There you go. So it's a duo. These boys are out. Uh, they are a, a metal hardcore alternative band. That's how they've labeled themselves. They're straight out of Austin, Texas, which is pretty rad. A um, yeah. lot, lot of good music, a lot of good metal coming out of Texas. And um, yeah, they've been, they've been around since uh, 2005. Uh, Sincere is spelt as in S I N S E R. Sincere, I like, the, I like the play on that name. Yeah. Are you being sincere? Mm. You know, uh, but yeah, they are a heavy metal group originating from the roots of South Texas, established in 2015. 
um, of the years of collaborations and exchanging production notes amongst one another uh, by taking alternative melodies this american music duo has developed a unique sound that separates them from other heavy acts of today so i think what's cool about this is uh, it's just two guys so i'm really um i'm really uh, interested to 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 see uh or should i say hear uh what they're all about um this is their one they, they actually submitted uh two tracks to to us uh this is the one year uh it's called ambivalent so that's the artwork for their for their one um single that they sent us and then um uh, this the one that we are going to feature today and play for them is we'll get it up here quite technologically challenged so just go with the flow no that's in yeah oh that's for 3d here so this is the uh the song we'll be featuring today it's called how it ends so uh let's have a listen and uh see how it ends
pretty cool. So that's uh, Sincere with How It Ends. What do you think of that, David? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting to my old ear, it's probably a, a, a not as... Uh, but I, I like the, uh, some of the instrumental in it. Instrumental was cool. I thought the instrumental was great. Mm -hmm. um, we were just actually, during, while the song was playing, we were just busy discussing the artwork for this track. And um, yeah, uh, very cool, very cool effects. We, we, we were just discussing that. Um, yeah, I like it. I think, you know, it's, um, I love how it, I love how it started off like really, really quiet and mellow and then went into it. And um, but yeah, the guitar melodies in it, fantastic. And uh, I quite enjoyed the vocal as well. So um, yeah, I think just for two, being two guys, I think it's fantastic. You never ever think listening to that, that it'll just be two guys pulling that off. Yeah, um, yeah. So great, yeah. 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 So. Very creative. Not, not, not a metal head over here. What, what, <laughs> what, what would you give it out of, uh, out of 10? Oh, that's not fair. On <laughs> that's not fair on them. That's, that's not. <laughs> With my with my yeah. level of of, of, of um, input or rather insights into music, uh, I, I they get ten out of ten for for trying and doing the best they can, <laughs> and and and, in, and I'm sure they will evolve too. Yeah. It's just like with writing a book. First time you write a book, you don't have the same uh, depth and so on, whatever, and and the notes of thoughts and things that go into the book for sure that you do so it's the same same thing they're young guys and i uh, wish them well well yeah and that's the thing and you know it's all it's all about being authentic and yeah we, right. we i love having another set of ears that doesn't really listen to that type mm. of music just to, just to see even if you said like oh my god that's horrible you know that would be great you know but uh yeah i really enjoyed it i thought it was great uh check them out sincere uh Get him on uh, the streaming platforms, uh, get him on Facebook, and uh, yeah, give him a listen. Uh, after this uh, after this uh, cast, I'm going to give that other track a listen that they that they sent through us, see what that's all about. And yeah, if you want to be featured on the show, uh, send us your tracks. Uh, we won't turn anybody away. Uh, we'll definitely play it, definitely, especially if you're uh, into, you know, if, you, if you're playing any type of metal or anything uh, of that sort. Uh, we definitely won't turn you down. We'll probably turn down, I don't know, like Justin Bieber's and shit, but definitely not any type of rock or metal or anything that takes talent to do. If you're a DJ, you can fuck off. We're not featuring you. But uh, <laughs> for everybody else, send us your stuff. We'll, we'll play it. Like I said, we don't even listen to it first. We just put it straight on. Uh, so it's fresh for our ears as well. So cool. Thanks for the chat, David. Yes, lovely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Check you it for, later. Thank you for... Uh, Rant over.